Welcome to the Journey Podcast, the podcast that's all about you. The podcast that interviews interesting guests and listens to their journeys of where they've been, where they are now, and where they are going. And welcome to the Journey Podcast. Today is a special episode. We are joined by Tim Campbell, the Mustard Man. Uh, just a really neat entrepreneur local to our area. I've known Tim a uh, little over a decade now. Pretty close to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I appreciate you being here today, Tim. You decided to come in studio to show us everything that you have, and you have some really neat wares here. So tell us, our listeners and our viewers, uh, what your business is and uh, what you have for us here today. Okay, thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Uh, my company is The Mustard Man Inc. I manufacture and produce five different mustards. Simply Sweet, Simply Pepper, Simply Horsey, Simply Maple, and Simply Chipotle. Uh, I've enjoyed our relationship for almost 10 years. We've met at the uh, Canton Chamber breakfast meetings. Yeah. And to me, uh, and I'm not going to speak for you, but the Chamber has been so helpful for a small business guy getting started uh, because as you go on it's not necessarily what you know it's who you know and that's been the big benefit of the chamber and that's how we met absolutely and you're pretty spread far and wide multi-state uh operation here as far as i know you can speak more to that yeah it's uh, literally grown from one bottle <laughs> one label one cap at a time and I'm pretty much through the state of Ohio. I do have two distributors, one here in Walnut Creek, Ohio, and one up in Warren, Michigan, and they do distribute my product multi-state. Well, that's fantastic. So tell us uh, a little bit about how you came into this role of the Mustard Man and, and the branding and everything. You've got some, some great branding going on here. Yeah, I've, I've always been pretty much what I considered self-employed. Uh, I've been a paper boy. I've been a caddy. I worked my way through college at drive throughs I'm a proud University of Akron grad. Uh, and I've, my last prior job, I worked with the National Association of Self-Employed. So I called on all self-employed guys. Business benefits, financial benefits, personal benefits, health benefits. And um, I love my zips. And so I took our family recipe, tailgating at Akron Zip Games and Ohio State Buckeye Games. And along the way, it's tailgating with your friends and family, and it's the, hey, Tim, you got to do something with this. Hey, Tim, you got to do something with this. And I might not be the smartest grad, because I heard that for about two, two and a half years <laughs> before I decided to act on it. I called Ohio State on a Monday morning after uh, Ohio State football weekend, and I said, look, what do I do with this? And they pointed me to Bowling Green, Ohio, to a nonprofit kitchen I'm still associated with today. Uh, it's called SIP, Center for Innovative Food Technology. And the beauty of it is it's both educational facility and it's a manufacturing facility. And I kid you not, Nate, the first seminar I ever attended was how to take <laughs> your family recipe to market. <laughs> and that was almost 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. 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 And so what I would do is I would travel from here in Canton, Ohio, 122 miles from my door <laughs> over to that facility in Bowling Green. And my Honda CRV, it's amazing how much stuff you could put in a Honda CRV, <laughs> from ingredients to caps to labels to bottles. And then I would literally start it out mixing, pouring, spilling, <laughs> one bottle at a time. And then as the business progressed, I moved to the other side of the building uh, where they had an automated filler. And then I could blend and mix and then pour the mustard into an automated filler and get a couple hundred bottles a minute. And at that time, I had hired up to three and four people to help me on production. And again, the beauty of the facility, educational, so it helps little people like me take that family recipe to market. And then secondly, um, the manufacturing side was amazing because I didn't have to buy a building. I didn't have overhead. 
I didn't have to buy equipment. I didn't have to get a facility license to produce uh, mustard. That was so invaluable to a small business guy starting. And they charged me per hour charge. And quite honestly, it was doodly squat for what they charged me. But what it does is allow a small little guy with me like a recipe. And that's all I am as a guy with a recipe. And uh, made the most of the opportunity. So that, that, that's fantastic. So you're still manufacturing in Bowling Green these five different recipes that you, is that true? No, I've, I've progressed beyond that. Oh, okay. And so now I have, uh, when I was going over there, I would go once every eight weeks, once every six weeks, every four weeks, and then I was going once a week for a long time, and then I couldn't keep up with the manufacturing. And so I ventured out and I have a uh, contract packager that helps me bottle box <laughs> wow, all the mustards fantastic. right now. And um, can't say enough about them. They've been very helpful and helped me really take it to the next level because as demand grew, I had to have that manufacturing capacity yeah. to keep up with it. Yeah. So um, almost 10 years. Is it 10 years or is it beyond 10 years? 20, no, it's about 10 years. No, okay. it's about 10 years. Okay. So, uh, through this, what's one thing that you really didn't expect to happen throughout this whole experience? Um, really how quickly it has grown. Okay. Okay. Uh, because I honestly thought that I would go to, in our area, the Hartville uh, market and start there. Trying to get people interested in my product, have it grow that way, and then maybe a local grocery chain would pick me up and go from there. Uh, I was very fortunate and blessed. I got into a grocery store in the area close to Bowling Green facility. And from there, it just progressed from there. And the customers, I can't say enough about them because almost everybody I talked to at the beginning gave me a chance on the mustard van and took my product in. And one of the other things I like to do I love doing the store demos. I'm a little weird duck on that way. I really, I really do enjoy that. And I've met so many people through the years. And one of my catchphrases is, tasting is believing. And that's what I do in my tastings, right? You taste the mustard, you either like it or you don't like it. And now I have recipes. And so it's grown from the original family party dip recipe, which is how it started out, taking a bowl with chips, cheese, crackers, trombone, summer sausage, and just dipping and having a lot of fun and taking that version to the tailgate parties early on. But now I have recipes and the variety of these recipes in here, salmon, meatloaf, asparagus, uh, potato salad, on and on and on. And the beauty of all my recipes, none of them are mine. They're all from customers that use my product. Wow, that's great. It is great. And then here's the other thing about my mustard. My mustard's interchangeable in all these recipes. So once you figure out what flavor you like, you can keep changing the recipe oh. by changing the mustard. It's very creative. And I'll say that I'm a product of uh, tasting is believing because I'm not a mustard person. <laughs> but I usually have a bottle of either uh, peppered or chipotle in my refrigerator very good. Uh, for, for a recipe. So. And, uh, yeah, definitely something that I'm not a yellow mustard person, but you get into this line, it's, it's worth it for me. So, so tell me a little bit, uh, you're in the mustard, or I don't know, what's the, the overarching industry? It's condiment or? Yeah, pretty much in condiment. Condiment industry. Especially so, foods, yeah. Uh, what's a common myth about your industry? Uh, common myth. Uh, that it's not all big guys. Okay. In the condiment and specialty food. Yes. Are there big people in mustard or barbecue sauce or ketchup out there? Yeah, there are. Uh, but the opportunity for somebody that has a little specialty item like mine, you can find that little niche in that market and you can have some success. Definitely success in the mustard there for you. So. What would you say is the biggest challenge you're facing uh, right now in your role? Uh, today, just like, just like everybody in the last two years, uh, with the COVID going on, supply chain has been a big thing. Um, 
some of the lead times for a little small guy like me, some of my product lead time is anywhere from 26 to 42 weeks. Wow. Yeah, and then the other part is, on the production side, is labor. Because now the co-packer has a hard time finding labor. And so as a result, production projects get pushed farther and farther out. Oh my. Right, so the forecasting and the projection, yeah, it's been a challenge, but we seem to be doing okay. <laughs> so you've had a lot of challenges then sourcing, even even being able to provide your full line. Is that true? Um, I'm going to say, no, not really. My suppliers have been fantastic for me, uh, especially the ones that got me started early on. And I love telling these stories. Uh, all these suppliers say they want to help that little small guy get started. We really want to help you get started. All you have to do is buy 50. No, really, I got to buy 50,000 of something to get started. And fortunately, I've got some great suppliers uh, that have helped me along the way, especially Kaufman Container up in Cleveland. They gave me a chance on 2,500 bottles. And when she gave me an opportunity with that 2,500, I took the opportunity because I figured out if I couldn't sell 2,500 bottles of mustard, guess what? <laughs> It's probably not going to work. You can't sell mustard. Yeah. <laughs> right? And so, Nicole Maine. Nicole Maine has stuck with me through and through. And uh, it's been a great relationship. And I, I do value those friendships and those relationships, especially for the people or the stores and the SIF Center, all those guys that got me started. I can't say enough about them. Wow, that's fantastic. You'll work in those networks and just the relationships are so important. You mentioned supply chain, which yeah. is kind of a, uh, a symptom or something that came out of COVID. And we've talked a lot about supply chain on the Journey podcast. But how did COVID affect your business overall? Did that increase sales, lower sales? Yeah, you just said, you mentioned store demos. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so at the beginning of, uh, at the beginning of COVID, yeah. Um, one of the few places that anybody could go was the grocery store. And yeah. the grocery store for the last couple of uh, years has really had a nice increase in their business. Uh, unfortunately for me, at the beginning of COVID, I'm a specialty type product. And the specialty type products took kind of a hit. And we had to see how the whole COVID thing was gonna play out. The two primary uh, specialty foods that did really well were pasta sauce and barbecue sauce because hmm. people couldn't go out to eat and they figured out that they could go to the grocery store and make their spaghetti or their lasagna ah. and they could keep their grills or their smokers going while we waited out COVID to see where it was going to play out. So uh, it took me about nine months before the dust started to settle and the business started picking up again. and. Uh, just like before COVID, my trajectory is going in the right direction, yeah. and I'm happy with that. So did you consider a uh, Mustard Man branded toilet paper at any point? <laughs> you know what? I probably should have. <laughs> I don't know if the yellow color would have gone. But <laughs> so what do you think is like the most important lesson that you've learned over your career? You've you said you've been an entrepreneur the whole time. What, what's the most important thing you've learned? Our, our audience is primarily entrepreneurs, so. Yeah, and then here's what I, here's what I say. Uh, don't say shoulda, woulda, coulda. Because I hear too many people that have their own ideas, and I want to do this with grandma's recipe, or I want to do this with my brother's recipe, or something along that in the food line. But even in business, too. I hear people talk about their aspirations, but... I would tell you, don't say shoulda, woulda, coulda. And anybody that is self-employed or takes the chance on being self-employed, I have such mad respect for those individuals because until you come become self-employed, you have no idea how many hats you wear right. in the yeah. hat rack. And I'm that one-man band. Yes, do I get great support from my wife on the accounting and business side? Absolutely. Uh, do I get help with Scott Walk along my social media? Absolutely, I do. Uh, but for the most part, when you're getting started, you're that hat rack. Yeah. You're purchasing, your sales, <laughs> your delivery, <laughs> you're the whole ball of wax. Yeah. Uh, and you got to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, so enjoy what you're doing. 
run with your idea, just don't say shoulda, woulda, coulda. And anybody that tries it, uh, mad respect. Is everybody gonna be successful? No, not really. But you know in your own heart, you gave it that try. Yeah. And there's no looking back. Absolutely. So what would you say in your opinion is like an important personality trait to have to be an entrepreneur, or maybe even in the specialty food world? Uh, positive attitude and enthusiasm. Okay, especially in specialty food, if you have that family recipe, you already know you like it, right? Yeah. You have to portray that to the people that you're demoing stuff with, right? Um, and that's why I love doing the demo. I love the product I have. I've started with a couple. Recently, I've added maple and I've added chipotle. And I've got a few other ideas in the works coming down the line. And uh, have fun. Have a positive attitude, and you'll, it will carry you and take you a long way. Wow, that that's great advice. Through this, so has there been like um, like an important mentor to get you to this point? Can you speak more to that person? Yeah, I. Uh, there's been so many along the way, and I'm probably going to leave a few out. It's all right, okay. uh, but I will tell you, my wife for sure, and that's got that accounting background. She has manufacturing process background from working at Matrix up in Solon with hair care products, but she understands the manufacturing process that I go through to produce the mustard. Uh, plus, she's my partner for life. That's invaluable, right? The SIP Center. Uh, there's a lady over there named Paula Ray. Uh, couldn't say enough about them and uh, the SIP Center because she helps and educates little people like me along the way. They offer various seminars that help me get from point A to point B kind of thing. And then on the production side, she helps you figure out how to produce your product efficiently every time. And I, I did uh, become more efficient <laughs> every time I went from production from mixing, pouring, and spilling <laughs> one bottle at a time to going to the other side of the business, uh, the other side of the uh, facility on the automated side with the filler. Um, and it's been an educational process along the way. And that, Paula Ray, Scott Lochtel's helped me on my social media. Uh, but then again, all those stores that gave me a chance when I got started. And I still have, I still maintain relationships with those guys. And some of those guys are guys I still handle direct in sales because those guys gave me a chance. Yeah. And I give them their choice. They can go to the distributor if they want to, which probably in the long run is easier, and I suggest that, but the relationship is pretty, pretty special. Absolutely. So what's one lesson that this job has taught you that you think everybody should learn? Uh, follow your heart, follow your dream, and again, positive attitude on whatever you're doing, okay? Uh, and enthusiasm for what you're doing. Uh, you mentioned COVID. Yeah, that was a struggle there for nine months, right? Uh, and it's too easy for a small self-employed guy to say, all right, yeah. that's enough. Yeah, absolutely. I've had enough, right? Many threw in the towel. Many threw in the towel. And probably for good reasons on some of them. But again, uh, stick with your passion. And if you have that enthusiasm and that positive attitude, uh, that will carry you through. And then things like the Chamber of Commerce, right? That's networking. Uh, and everybody in the network is a different set of eyes on your business. And so the suggestions and the helpful hints from your connections, whatever they are, or your inner circle, whatever they are, those are invaluable. So would you say uh, if you're not enthusiastic about what you're doing, you're probably doing the wrong thing? I would say yes, right? Because I've seen it a few times, people will have their own recipe and their own product and they go and do the demos and they stand there. Yeah. And you know what? The customer in the store reads that, right? And there's two people that don't like that. The customers don't like seeing that. And you know what? The store guy that's giving you a chance yeah. <laughs> doesn't like seeing that, right? Uh, Got to have an attitude. And that, that's anything in life. Oh, absolutely. So what's one thing about the specialty food world that almost no one agrees with you about? Um, good question. I, I think 
and that's a cliche line. I think the specialty food market is the variety of life, right? Kind okay. Of thing. Because you can find anything that you want to find. Uh, I have some stores that have over 1,200 wow. different hot sauces, right? A lot of hot sauces. That's a lot of hot sauce. And if you go down, even the typical grocery store, if you go down the mustard aisle, shoot, <laughs> there's a lot of variety of there. Um, so that was the other thing, too. Everybody asked me about competition. Am I worried about the big guy and this guy and that guy? Uh, and honest, quite honestly, I say no, because do I know who they are? Right, and there's certain markets with mustard and bigger uh, brands out there I can't compete with, and I know I can't compete with. I don't want to compete with, and that's where my specialty product comes into play, and that's the catchphrase: "Tasting is believing." Right, that's absolutely awesome. So tell me, uh, you you're doing a lot of productivity. You have to do a lot yourself. So yeah. what would you say is your favorite productivity hack for entrepreneurs? Um, it's at the end result. After you set up your schedule and your planning and getting all your ducks in a row for production or whatever you're doing, um, the fun part for me is doing the demo because I get to see the end user, right? And <laughs> I really enjoy what they tell me they put my product on mm. and how they use it and so forth like that. And my social media has been a great aspect for that. Facebook, The Mustard Man Ohio, or Instagram, The underscore Mustard underscore Man One has been fantastic because these customers post pictures and send me recipes of what they're doing with the mustard. and. Uh, I just think that's fantastic. So what time of day do you get your best work done? Are you a morning, evening person? I'm a morning guy. Always okay. have been a morning guy. And I think it started with that, uh, that paper route yeah. and being that caddy. So uh, yeah, I get my best work done in the morning. and um, Or my best work is, since I'm out and about everywhere, uh, my mustard mobile. Oh, <laughs> which is my my Honda Odyssey van that has well over three hundred and fifty thousand wow. miles on it since I got started. That's my mobile office. Uh, I know some people think I'm nuts, and when they see me going down the road, they probably think I'm talking to myself. <laughs> but I'm either singing or I'm talking to customers along the way. And when I'm in my mobile office, that allows me to reset get my mind straight and kind of put my direction into play. Absolutely. So what would you say is an underrated tool that's indispensable for your job? Maybe the Honda Odyssey. Honda Odyssey, by the way, 350,000 miles. That's an accomplishment in itself. Yeah, I, and I can tell you, going over to the production facility, it's 122 miles from my door to the door in Bowling Green. And I can't tell you how many trips I've made. <laughs> but I've taken the Mustard Mobile down to Florida, I have my uh, mustard in the Sarasota area. Nice. Been to Carolinas a couple times. Been to PA a little bit. Uh, been over to Indiana and Michigan. So uh, yeah, enjoy my mustard mobile. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> indispensable. So if you could start a business tomorrow, what would that business be? Um, probably on consulting. Okay. Guys that want to start a business, right? And. Um, I'm just a guy with a recipe, and I do appreciate this. I get asked by people that say, hey, I got grandma's recipe this, or I got this barbecue sauce, and I do this, right? Uh, I don't have all the answers, because uh, again, I was a guy with a recipe, right? But I always tell them, I'll help you out the best I can, or I'll try to point you in the right direction where to get the answers and go from there, and then you can figure out how that fits into your play and your plan, and then go from there. So tell us a little bit about your products here. You've got five lined up here. Tell us what, what these go best with, what you have here. All right, so the sweets, the soft and creamy. This generally will not offend that non-mustard fan. This is your party dip. Chips, cheese, crackers, trail bologna, summer sausage. If you got the younger crowd around, that's your chicken tender, chicken nugget, hot dog one. Simply sweet here Simply for sweet. the viewers. Yeah. Okay. And my next one is simply peppered. It's a black pepper mustard. Grilled steak, grilled chicken, burgers, brats, turkey breast sandwich, salmon, 
hard boiled eggs. And if you go to mustardman.com, you can find all the different recipes, but there's a potato gratin recipe in there with the black pepper that is just simply outstanding. And it plays really well for family gatherings and right here in the holidays. If mm. you're hosting or you gotta take that dish, that potato gratin recipe is not a bad, <laughs> not a bad dish to take. I, I put simply peppered on pork chops. It's one Excellent. of my f- excellence. Uh, simply peppered. Yeah, yeah. Next one up, we have simply horsey. Uh, and my horsey is not eye watering, and it's not sinus clearing. It's probably about a six or a seven on a scale of one to ten. And the thing is, is this is corned beef, roast beef, prime salmon. There's a killer meatloaf recipe uh, in the recipe booklet with. Uh, uh, the horsey, but the other easy recipe is take your uh, pot roast recipe, throw it in a crock pot, celery, carrots, onion soup, whatever you do to it, poke it with a fork, you put a little half inch layer of the horsey on top, whoosh, let, let it go. It's pretty tasty. Fantastic. It's uh, simply, simply horsey. So yeah, that's, that's wonderful. So uh, this is my favorite one here though. Chipotle is one of the newer ones, simply Chipotle. It's just got that little slow smoky heat. Yeah. And again, it's not overpowering. Right. Uh, and during my demos, when they taste it, I give it this, just wait, just wait, just wait. And then, whew, then you get that slow, little slow smoky heat mm-hmm. when tasting the product. Uh, really unique. Uh, my wife blends it in chili. Uh, doctor your baked beans with it, doctor your mac and cheese with it. There is a meatloaf recipe in, in the uh, recipe booklet, but this is the beauty of my res- or my mustards. The meatloaf recipe will suggest the horsey, but I'm telling you, if you kick the horsey out and make it with the chipotle, <laughs> really, really good. And you said with the recipes, they're interchangeable, so that's the neat part. Yeah. yeah, simply chipotle. I haven't found anything I don't like it on. So Yeah, yeah charcuterie uh, boards for any of these. Uh, for the holidays, uh, just dip away. <laughs> Gotta love it. And then we've got we've got this last one down here. Simply maple. Maple's a little bit different. Uh, it's not a sweet sweet product. It's more like a maple sausage. Uh, pork, ham, sausage brats, ham and cheese sliders. Caramelizes really nice on grilled chicken. Excellent on salmon. And then any of the guys and gals out there that play with the smokers or crock pots, right? Uh, if you rub down your pork with the maple and then throw your spices and rubs on it. Uh, maple for your pork, really good on your chops too, Nate. Yeah, well I just got a smoker last season, uh-huh. so I gotta get into more of this uh, Simply Maple. So. Yeah, and then the black pepper for the smoker crowd. Uh, again, this is your grilled steak, grilled chicken, but if you're doing the beef on the smoker, rub down your uh, beef with the Simply Pepper, throw uh-huh. your rubs on and let it go. Right, the mustard man's got it all. Yeah. So a couple rapid fire questions here go. at the end. Uh, what are three books you would recommend and why to the audience? Um, hmm. This goes way back when I first got started. Uh, the Great Gatsby oh, okay. was one of my all time favorite books. Uh, I've read a lot of the business books, seven effective ways of highly effective people and so forth. Um, what else did I read? Um, I'm a big Jim Trussell fan. All right. I've read some of Jim Trussell's stuff. He's very motivational, uh, enthusiastic, and I like his attitude. Yeah. Great. Uh, all right. I'm starting a business today. What's one word of wisdom you would have for me? Uh, enjoy what you're doing. Be positive about it. Keep going. On the local side, get to know your local chamber of commerce. Absolutely. Okay, so I've asked you a lot of questions. What's one question you wish I would have asked you today? Um, you already told me you like it on chops. Yeah. Um, what's one of your favorite family recipes? Oh, okay, so it's an ice cream cake. Oh. <laughs> uh, mint chocolate dessert, graham crackers on the, the bottom, so we use mint chocolate ice cream and then Oreo cookies on the top with another graham cracker layer on the top. It's about 10,000 uh, calories a slice, um, so you pretty much don't want to eat anything else. But my grandmother made it. Now, here's the funny thing about it. So I've made it. It's really, really good. But if you don't store it in one of those old freezers, you just don't quite get the right 
Oh, it's really nice. strange. So my sister made it like two years ago, and she had one of those old freezers, and she didn't realize she put it in. I'm like, you made it just like grandma. So it has to be stored in an old ice box to really get that flavor out of it. And guess what? There's nothing better than grandma's recipe. Absolutely. So <laughs> she got it. She got it that time. So yeah, that's that's. All right. So how often do you make this? Uh, that's a Christmas time dessert. All right. So, so yeah. What time am I coming over? Yeah. <laughs> we can make it special for you too as well. Well, Tim Campbell, thanks for being on the Journey Podcast. Where can the listeners and viewers find you online and learn more about the Mustard Man? Yeah. If you if you just uh, reach out to mustardman.com, it'll give you a brief description of all my different products. Uh, you can purchase the product online. Um, Do you ship, ship anywhere in the U.S.? Ship anywhere in the U.S. It's priority mail, so it generally gets across the country in two to three days. Uh, if you're using it as gifts, I put whatever note Nate wants to put in there. Happy birthday, Merry Christmas, thank you. And they get whatever mustard that you pick, and then I toss in the recipes with the product, and we, right. ship that, that, we ship that out to you. Awesome. So check out the Mustard Man online, Instagram, Facebook. Great following there. His website. It was great spending some time with you today, Tim. Great it's to see your products. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for being on the Journey Podcast. Thank you.